not African. <laughs> my passport isn't African, nor does my ID say that I'm a South African citizen. But I am African. From nine months old, Africa has been my home. The side of Table Mountain when coming back from a trip overseas makes me feel like I'm home. And the sound of a colored accent when standing in the line in Heathrow Airport makes me feel, man, I'm almost home. I've grown up here, I've been educated here, and hell, my mom even makes a damn good pup and chakalaka. Recently, I graduated in graphic design. I guess I'm now a designer in Africa. In my third year, I was lucky enough to be a finalist in an eco-design initiative competition. The theme of the competition was, home is where the heart is. Well, where was my heart? I know that my home is here in Africa, but my heart? It was more than just in Africa. This was a competition for sustainability, and what could I create to make people act sustainably? Sustainability did not just lie here in Africa, but globally. And if my heart is here in Africa, then it's here on Earth, and Earth being our only home. So after talking to a bunch of people and flowing through ideas, I realized people like to talk about sustainability, but no one actually acts on it. Being part of the Facebook generation, I thought, hey, what if people didn't update their statuses with silly things like, oh, this chocolate muffin is so delicious right now, but instead with great ideas like, hey, I've got an idea for a sustainable washing machine. Can anyone help me carry it out? So I created a social network for the environment where ideas could be spread and crowdsourcing could make them reality, petitions could be signed, and information could be shared. Sustainable action. This won me a position in the competition's challenge phase. Two weeks, 22 finalists, three design solutions as the outcome. Design solutions for Sucker Mandela Primary School in Kailicha. Kailicha? What? We're going to Kailicha, the township? And what are we going to do there? And how are we going to get there? And what clothes do I wear? And my cell phone? Should I take my cell phone? All these negative thoughts just pouring through my head. Needless to say, my fears <laughs> were put at bay. We did have transport organized. I did wear appropriate clothing. And I did take my cell phone. But you know what? I was never scared in those two weeks. I realized this is someone's home, someone's neighborhood. And it was going to be mine for those t that time. When we drove into Kailicha on that first day, <sighs> there's so much to take in. Whole streets lined with mattresses and tables and chairs, all for the taking. And corner kitchens with raw meat out for display. Sheep heads all lined up. Kids as young as two years old just wandering around by themselves. And shack after shack so close together. People in the middle of the day at home. You go to any other neighborhood, it's dead. Everyone's at work. We're in the heart of Kailicha. And the first thing I said when we got back to Cape Town was I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful for the roof over my head, for the education that I had, for the job that I got, for privacy. Two weeks were definitely going to be an experience. On the first day, we got split up into teams. There was team home, team school, and team play. I was in team play. With our team, we got a client attached, an organization that works within the school and with the kids, teaching through a holistic approach how to live a balanced and fulfilling life. We learned humans, even myself, have lost connection. Connection to ourselves, to others, and to the planet. And this organization is trying to restore those connections, starting with children. So to reconnect to self, they have yoga class. I got the privilege. <laughs> of being part of the five-year-old's yoga class. It's incredible. These kids, they're so eager. They just, they just want to do it. And there's this one, Sisonke, who is amazing at yoga. And she not only goes to her class, but to the 10-year-old's class and the 13-year-old's class in a row. <laughs> then they have the gardening and hiking club to reconnect to Earth. We got a chance to listen to this one boy reminisce about his first hike up Lion's Head. And that was the most beautiful thing he'd ever seen. And he even got to hug a tree. And you know what he said? He even kissed it. It was magic. And they have this garden in the school that your grandmother would die for. And that, when harvested, can feed the whole school for lunch every day. 
what was my team going to do to make a difference in these kids' lives, this community, for this organization? We went through a bunch of ideas, from a bicycle pumping system for the garden, to a self-teach toolkit, to a very elaborate interactive exhibition stand. The client did want an exhibition stand at the end of the day, but ours was too complex. Long-lasting, but not sustainable, and way too complicated for the organization staff to put up. All our ideas are too complex. We're designing like high-end designers and not like down-to-earth people. We're forgetting the main ingredient. Who is this for? The organization. So why was it for them? To uplift more kids' lives. So what message needed to come through in the stand? The kids. The human factor. Far too often, designers get caught up in the glamour of the design and forget about those whom they're designing for. So, in the last week, when all the other teams were grinding away and painting and making and constructing, we were gathering, involving and learning. We gathered experiences and stories from the children. We got them to write and draw on fabric swatches, their different experiences with the clubs. Others were recorded their voices as they reminisced about their first hikes, their love for yoga and the fondness for the garden. We then took all that and constructed a very simple structure that could easily be put up and taken down, effective along a wall or in an open space for people to walk around. We then took the fabric swatches and sewed them together to make one panel. And we had an information panel for the organization and an interchangeable picture panel. So as time went by, pictures could be updated. We took the voices and put them into a clip so they could play through the panel so more people could hear these amazing stories. When you include those whom you're designing for, you not only create a better, more practical, more sustainable design, but you give them a sense of ownership. And it's ownership that will make people want to use your design. It's the simple designs that are the most effective. Take, for instance, the homework group. They constructed and came up with this idea that they would not have realized if they hadn't gone into the homes of the kids, spoken to their parents, and realized the original idea of a solar heating bag and a non-water leakage system was not really what they wanted. But with every family, it was a space for their children to do their homework. A simple design, effective on your lap, or on a crate, or on plastic bottles, all things found in and around the community. Simple, effective, sustainable. My whole world, my, <laughs> my whole point of view on design just went upside down after those two weeks. But you know what? It was actually the right way up. When you include those you're designing for, or, or anything in that matter, then you create something that's much better. Process is the key part when designing, and when doing anything. And when that process is the collaboration whether it's an idea, a solution, anything, then it has a purpose and a use. I was so inspired. <laughs> I just I had so much energy. I just, I just wanted to do something. I realized oh, I wasn't a designer in Africa anymore. I was an African designer, and that's what I want to be. So the time for thinking's over, guys. It's time to act. Like my social network, get involved can't wait for the government to make the laws to change our world for the better. It's time we realize we can be the change, and it starts here. Like the Waka Waka song says, it's time for Africa. And it is. We got all the inspiration, all the, all the resources. All you got to do is get out there, be involved in your community, be involved in other communities. Sustainability doesn't need to be as elaborate as an electric car but it's about being inspired by what's around you, involving those around you, and creating something that sustainably makes a difference in someone's life.